Hey everybody, uh, Nancy Nadell, who was former Oakland council member in District 3 and I are having a, an argument on Facebook, uh, although I don't think it's much of an argument because I'm about to end it really quick, uh, where she's back to this old idea. This has to do with, first of all, uh, a group, actually a, a nonprofit organization, a multi-million dollar nonprofit organization that um, calls itself Alliance for Californians for Community Empowerment, or ACE, um, is and is a left of center group that focuses on liberal housing policies, including rent control, according to its description, and it participates in efforts to elect Democrats, good thing, to office at all levels of government over left wing policies, a supports, including raising taxes, supporting sanctuary policies, prohibiting law enforcement from operating within federal immigration authorities, and increasing the minimum wage. I don't think the last one should be considered, I don't know why these are considered left wing policies, but this is a it's called influencewatch.org. That's another story. Let me cut back to the point. Uh, they are paying for a march uh, to be done on my friend Phil Tagami's house. Uh, Phil is a long time to Oakland, uh, raised, born and raised, uh, and schooled, go skyline. Uh, now, real estate developer who worked himself up from being a real estate broker for Randy Berger and left him with Randy owing him over $16,000 and Phil went out and literally uh, struggled his way to the top. And he's a he's a, a lesson for anybody who understands how hard it is to start a business for themselves and, um, and how to do so in a political environment. And yet in Oakland, because we have a number of people who fear success, that's not done. And instead... Phil gets things done, but you have a number of people who are simply always trying to make life hard for Phil. And this in light of the fact that Phil has done a lot of good things. When I say good things, I mean lit thousands of dollars to people in need uh, in, on many occasions. You can walk down, up down Oakland right now and talk to, if you're able to get a hold of them in this situation, any business owner or restaurant owner and I would say seven times out of 10, they have a story for you that involves how Phil Takami helped them. That's just a fact. But Phil, a long time ago, had an idea for redeveloping the Oakland Army base that called for uh, building a bulk terminal. Now, a bulk terminal has long been uh, a dream in the eye of Port of Oakland fans, officials, and, uh, and uh, others, workers, uh, for decades, the 1986 San Francisco Bay Seaport Plan called for five new berths for bulk terminal. Well, guess what? We don't have a bulk terminal. The only place best for it was the outer harbor of, actually near the outer harbor of the Port of Oakland, which is the largest port, not just in the Bay Area, but one of the largest ports in uh, the world. Anyway, um, Phil introduced this idea uh, as a request for proposal response and everyone loved it because it wasn't office or something that would promise lower wages. It promised higher wages and better jobs. So then um, it was right in the fit with what the port had needed for some time and everyone knew it. The trouble is that there are some people in the city of Oakland that didn't want Phil to do it. And so when Pat Cashman sent out uh, a call for a study to be done by, by the Tioga group out of uh, back east, uh, basically they were asked to evaluate the team that Phil put together and basically evaluate Phil. And, and I'm paraphrasing. They said, oh, well, you know, this particular group isn't going to get it done. I'm again paraphrasing. Phil, as Phil has a tendency to do, prove them all wrong, brought in Kinder initially, but Kinder did not want to produce the Oakland Bulkan Oversized Terminal using covered rail cars to carry coal. So guess what? Phil fired them, right? These are things that Nancy should know, but doesn't because... She has this idea that's in her head, and you can't replace it with the truth, it seems, as hard as one may try. But 
it also is a disservice to Phil and the story that he has over what he has went through to set in place and in motion the building of what would be the first of its kind low emission operational bulk terminal in the United States. An innovation that fits right in line with Oakland's innovation in a number of industrial categories over the decades. But I digress again. So Nancy's like, well, we called, and we can't find anyone that operates a covered hopper car, but you can send a picture, let me know. Well, first of all, how the hell can you tell that a covered hopper car has coal in it if it's covered? You can't. So, okay? Second, all she had to do was just do a little internet searching, right? Not only that, you don't call people today, you send them emails. So I kind of wondered if what she was saying was really true. Anyway, I'm just being honest, Nancy, okay? Um... Anyway, here's a little discussion regarding the existence of something called covered hopper cars. And when I show you that, I want to make a point. This is just randomly found. This is 1989 in a reference um, to a case. It says, Robert Butler, president of Butler Binion, made an inspection of the debtor's assets in connection with a potential submission of a bid. During Butler's inspection, he observed one locomotive, one compoose, two covered coal hopper cars, three steel box cars, you get the idea, okay? That's one example. I can provide other examples, but here's one, here's a, here's one that fits today if you wanna order a covered hopper car, you know, for coal from CSX, right? Let's look at this, okay? Look, all right? Covered hopper cars have a roof equipped with hatches for loading material into two, three, or four compartments. The bottom section of each compartment has a gate for unloading. A wide range of car options are available depending on the commodity, including special interior linings, hatch, or gate configurations. All right, these cars are designed for bulk commodities, like coal, that require protection against the elements and a contamination. I'm gonna stop there, all right? The reason why coals, coal is covered in open hopper cars is because it is thought to be impervious to weather. That's why you have them, all right? But in this instance, weather isn't the concern, it's the release of dust and gases that are the concern, hence the use of covered hopper cars. Covered hopper cars can be used and are used many times for coal. The specific idea of this project was just that. So it'd be really cool if these so-called environmentalists, instead of just saying no, which makes them sound more like they're white supremacist prejudice types, which I'm just being blunt, blunt, okay? Because of the group makeup. It would be nice if they jumped in and helped and said, hey, you know what? Here's an ingenious way we can get that job done and use the latest in technology and send a message that tech can solve the problem. But the people involved in this that are just saying no, they, uh, they come off like Luddites, afraid of technology, not wanting to hear that anything using technology is possible. And I'm sorry, that is one big reason, among others, why I jumped into this and begged to have Zenny 62 Media hired by Insight Terminal Solutions so I could use my 98 blog and several hundred social media account system to get out the truth. The truth of the matter is this, these are about deals. This is not like going to a grocery store and saying, well, you know what, I need a can of tuna. No. If you have a specific requirement, a spe specific type of car and a specific type of design, there are organizations that will make it and provide it for you, so long, of course, as you have the money to pay for it. And that's the problem. People in Oakland don't understand the basics of how this business works, and yet they come off like they do. Learn, and then build and create jobs. Get out and help out, get out and push. Thanks.